Hi, this is intended to be a quick demonstration and an installation overview for this Attendomatic system. This is something I developed using the Google Suite to try to keep track of students as they check into the Google Classroom and it's going to hopefully register when they arrive and check the Google Classroom and report it back to me in a format that makes some sense. Here's the overview of it. Student will go to their Google Classroom and they will see an item, either a material or an assignment, that they can click on. And when they click on the thing, it takes them right on over to a quick form that they can say they are present. And it asks, how is your classwork going? I'll say, good, thanks. Hit next and then hit submit. So here's what's going on with this and how it's working for us. On the back end of this thing, it is collecting all of the responses in a great big long list all the way through here. And then it's formatting that information into an attendance book, which formats the student's name. It actually sorts all of the classes. I've set this up so it shows me my classes, my lists. And then it puts a little green sticker under the appropriate day and gives it a timestamp. And it actually color codes it so things that happen in the morning get a lighter color, things in the evening or in the late afternoon, darker color. So this is the way I want to collect my information. And I'll show you how you can set it up so it'll work for you too. Here we go. Stage one, you need this link to get started. If uh, you're watching this on YouTube, you can probably find the link in the notes below. Otherwise, you probably found this web page or the instruction manual, and you can get it just by clicking on that link. And it'll ask you to make a copy. This is a copy of a Google document, a spreadsheet, that's going to be plunked onto the root of your Google Drive. Now, right now, this is available to members of the OCDSB. We'll see if this is successful. We can spread it a little further if people need it. Meanwhile, it's created this copy, and the first thing that you should do when you get a copy of a document is rename it. And I would suggest last name, first initial. Once again, this is probably going to be on the root of my Google Drive, but I can move that later if I want to. Once it's been renamed, the next thing to do is to go make a form. So I'm going to click on the form option at the top and use edit form to manufacture a new form. Again, it says it's a copy of, so I'm gonna right mouse click that. Excuse me, I'm going to highlight it. Put last name, first initial, and rename the file. Next thing you might want to collect, though, is to hit this little send button in the top and look for send via and look for a link or an embed. I'm going to copy the link and I could use this and email it to my students if I wanted to. Or I could just use Google Documents inside the Google Classroom and embed the form right inside there as a material. Okay, now that the form's been created, it's actually active and working at this point in time, as long as it's being communicated to your students. But we would like to change how it's formatting the information way back over here. So this is collecting, it's active, it's online, but the attendance book is not set up to format the information the way you want it. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up right now. So this is set up the attendance book. You need to get an email address inside this red zone. And I've left you 30 spots for each one of your classes. Now, I've prepared my class emails before because I've done this a few times, and I'm just gonna simply copy the email address, the last name and the first name because I formatted it like this. The email address is the only real key thing that you need, but I've put all three in together to make life a little simpler and to speed up the demo. If I paste it in place with a right mouse click and paste special, paste values only, it'll conform to the background color and keep things all looking pretty. And now this thing is actually going to start reporting the information exactly where it should be as kids start entering the information into the responses. So you're set. The only other thing that you might want to set up is this little wine colored date. This is a starting date and all the other dates are looking at this one to see where to go. So if you wanted to advance this to something more current like April the 6th, just by clicking, double clicking it and changing it, all these other ones have updated. So now you're active and it's working. A couple other customizations though and maintenance that you might want to deal with. Uh, for this one right now, let's see, I have, it says here that I have 30 spots. Oh, I actually copied and pasted this in the wrong spot. That's interesting. Well, one of the things that you can do is you can actually remove rows with a right mouse click by highlighting down the row header to highlight the entire row and a right mouse click. I can delete these rows to make this look a little bit prettier. The numbering system here isn't quite right, so I could type one, two, and three. Highlight those three cells, and then look for the little anchor in the bottom right corner and drag it all the way to the bottom of the list so that you can update those numbers. 
Now, I wouldn't have had to do that if I'd pasted it into the right place, but just showing you how you can manipulate spreadsheets. Likewise, if you had to add rows, if, for instance, this next call or this next section didn't have enough spaces, I could click and highlight and say, okay, I'm going to add about six rows to it by highlighting those rows, a right mouse click, and I'll insert six above. So that pushes everything else down. And to to make this actually work, though, I might want to um, highlight down these rows and drag this to extend those numbers. And then I really should copy all the way across. In fact, I have to. I highlight all the way across the row, and I would like to extend by using that little anchor again, drag it down so that I get these gray cells and those little pink spots there, just as an indicator, for the rest of these columns. It's important because each one of these cells has a, has a calculation and a formula, and this is what makes everything happen and makes things show up the way they should. There's only one more maintenance thing that you might want to know, and that is what happens when you run out of weeks. Now, you can change the labels up at the top here if you want to, and if you want to add more uh, weeks along the right-hand side, it's pretty easy too. I'm going to highlight across the column headers, right mouse click, and insert 5 to the right. And then I'm going to copy all of these cells by highlighting across their columns, right mouse click and copy. And then I want to go one, two, three cells over. In this case, I'm going to Z for right mouse click and just a simple paste. And when you paste that in, it will extend the weeks to the next week after the week of April 20th. It's added seven to it. And the calculations are already built in. And you can also adjust these column sizes here if you want to, just to make it all look fairly pretty. So ladies and gentlemen, that's everything. That's in demonstration, installation, and a little bit of maintenance. Hope this works for you. Uh, I can't troubleshoot for everybody, but I hope that makes somebody's life a little bit easier. Good luck. Take care.